Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of State, John F. Carey, Director of Art and Embassies, Ellen Sussman, and the Chief Curator and Deputy Director of Art and Embassies, Virginia Shore. Everybody. Welcome. I'm Ellen Sussman, the Director of Art and Embassies, and it's my pleasure to welcome the Secretary of State and all of you to the second Art and Embassies Medal of Arts Awards. Today we honor seven artists whose talent and dedication to their work and mission of cultivating dialogue and exchange through the visual arts has enriched our program for many, many years. But first, a warm welcome to the Ambassador from China, to the United States, His Excellency Kui Tian Kai, and to the Executive Director of the Mexican Institute, Laura Ramirez Rascado. I would also like to acknowledge our own State Department luminaries, Tony Blinken, the Deputy Secretary of State, and the Director of the Overseas Buildings Operations, Lydia Muniz, who administers the United States effort around the world to build both sustainable and secure new embassies. Heartfelt thanks and gratitude to the sponsors of our luncheon, Jill and Jay Bernstein, Blake Byrne, Gail and Al Engelberg, Jeannie and Mickey Klein, Joe Carroll Lauder, Sarah Morgan, Shelley Rubin, Lori Tisch, and Sarah and Gary Walkowitz. I'm also immensely grateful to Dick and Sue Wallach and former Ambassador Kathy Hall and her husband Craig of Hall Wines for so graciously donating the delicious wine on your tables. And finally, to Art and Embassy's amazing staff, you will meet somebody from our office at every table. Without them, there would be no curated temporary or permanent exhibitions for ambassadors or embassies, no web presence, no cultural outreach, and no publications like the beautiful booklets at every seat, which is a perfect example of the more than 70 we produce every year. Now that the acknowledgments are done, I'd like to say a few quick words about why we're here about what matters, and it is this. We're all in this room because at the core of our being, we believe that art does and can change lives. It can create meaning and bridge a divide, show us something new, show us something old in a new way, enliven and help us to question ourselves and the world around us. As art classes and funding are cut from schools and public programs, art and embassies is proof that the visual arts matter on a huge and global scale. I recently received a fortune cookie that read, be brave enough to live creatively. And looking at the artists today receiving the award, there can be no doubt that this is their mantra. All of you are driven to create. Your works will forever grace the walls of our embassies around the world. Your art is often the first and only vision of America people in another country see. And as they walk into an annex or stand in line for a visa, your art welcomes them into the home of democracy. Art and Embassies works with young emerging artists, older established artists, American artists, international artists, and when we go into a foreign country, the work of artists in that host country hangs on the walls alongside yours. That is power, that is conversation, and that is diplomacy. Artists themselves are often the most well-spoken about the place art has in our lives. Bill Viola, the master of contemporary video art, said this last summer. The hallmarks of all human beings is creativity. And all of us in this room are creative in one way or another. But before creativity can manifest, there must be inspiration, which starts as a tiny spark in the human heart, a recognition of something that touches us or catches us off guard. And then finally, there's mystery, the most important of all. Today, we live in a world of reflections and mirrors. The mirror reflects only what is shown. To learn something new, one must break the mirror to discover what is beyond. I thank you for your contribution, for helping us around the world, and Art and Embassies is counting on everybody in this room to continue expanding our mission. And now, the Secretary. Sometimes you meet someone and you know that they're destined for greatness. 
I first met Secretary Kerry in New Hampshire in 1972 when I was 21 at his friend George Butler's True Farm. We were all working to help elect George McGovern that cold winter. And John had his own dreams and a plan for a life dedicated to public service. The synchronicity of life never ceases to amaze me, and it is my honor to serve our Secretary of State, a man who has worked tirelessly his entire life to make this country and the world a better place to live. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary of State John Kerry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I accept the nomination. <laughs> Tried that, been there. Um, it is great to be here with all of you and especially indoors as it begins to snow out there. Those of you who uh, I met earlier who've come up here from uh, Palm Beach have an obligation to take some of us back with you. Uh, I want you to know also that uh, uh, this is a place where we like to do firsts. But uh, Ellen, I'm telling you truthfully, that is the first time I've ever heard wisdom from a Chinese fortune cookie. <laughs> Joke, yes. Good idea, yes. Um, it is a pleasure for me to welcome our terrific ambassador from China, who is a good friend of mine personally and very persuasive and important and influential in the city. And we thank you for coming here and being with us today. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Former ambassadors who are here, likewise, and I want to recognize my very good friend and former colleague, Senator Chris Dodd, who is here. It's good to be with you, Chris. Uh, it's really... Uh, special to gather here in the Ben Franklin Room uh, where we hold special events. We do a lot of things in this room, but most importantly, this is our premier place to bring people. This is where we do the Kennedy Center Honors, and it's where we now have the privilege of honoring uh, seven highly accomplished men and women uh, who enrich our lives uh, with art and thereby uh, contribute immeasurably, really, to America's cultural diplomacy. And nobody should ever underestimate uh, the power, the importance of cultural diplomacy. And when I say cultural, it's in every form of culture. It's in our music, it's in our visual arts, it's in our literature, and in every respect, uh, it has an impact on people. I've met people, I know Chris did when he was in the Senate. You visit somewhere, you meet with people in civil society, or you meet with dissidents in a country, or you meet with even former leaders, Vaclav Havel, uh, others who themselves are in the arts, so to speak, even as they are engaged in politics. And the impact of words, of dreams, of aspirations, of uh, people's visions and hopes uh, is so powerful beyond measure. From Latin America, we've had some of the most powerful voices, from Russia, from other countries, over the course of time. So, you know, this is special. I can tell you personally, a long time ago, about the time of the discovery of fire, uh, I had some aspirations to be an artist myself. Uh, I mean, way back. As a kid, I played uh, bass guitar in a rock and roll band, and the best thing I could do to describe our sound was, let's say, loud. Uh, but we had fun, and uh, I fooled around when I was an undergraduate at college with uh, filmmaking and, you know, my images were too blurry and my, my pans were too fast, but boy, did I have fun. And I finally discovered that uh, what I really wanted to do was what I'm doing today. I still take my guitar with me on the airplane and entertain only myself, I assure you. But it's fun and uh, my appreciation for the craft and the skill uh, of the artist has just plain and simply grown immeasurably over these years, and particularly as Secretary of State. Uh, as I travel the world as, as Secretary, and I'm privileged to go into our many missions around the world, I always get to see the art that you help to place there, whether it's in the residence or in the embassy or consulate itself. In Kiev, I saw uh, Susanna Starr's embroidered doilies uh, on display uh, at Villa Taverna 
in Rome. I saw the marvelous Calder sculpture that's out in the garden and sat there really uh, with Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, with others negotiating and talking even as we looked across over at this extraordinary display. Uh, in Rabat, there is Kendall Buster's uh, sweeping pattern flow that descends gracefully from the ceiling uh, in this weightless beauty. And when I get to see these exhibits one after the other, one of the things that comes home to me very quickly is the breadth, the diversity of our presentation. And that is as it ought to be because it really reflects the diversity of our country. It's who we are. And that's what our art is supposed to reflect. Whenever people of another country look at us, they in fact, whether it's, it, it's our art per se or culture as a whole, uh, they see, I think, a part of themselves. And in some cases, uh, they also get an opportunity to imagine things that they don't have, whether it's human rights or freedoms or opportunities. American culture is a mosaic of everything from Armenian to Zimbabwean, everything in between. And when all of our traditions come together, they absolutely do create a universal language. And that is uh, really an indispensable asset for the American brand and for our diplomacy. Art in embassies is the principal lens through which the world is able to view the dynamism of our culture and artists. AIE was commissioned in 1963 under the very premise that American fine art could reach out to people thousands of miles away, people who speak different languages, practice different customs, worship different gods, or perhaps not even any at all. So the first director, Nancy Kiefhofer, used her position to bring color and light to embassies from Kuala Lumpur to Moscow. She sent Mark Rothko's oil paintings to New Delhi, uh, placed Andy Warhol's acrylic flowers in Madrid and Nepal, and she shipped Reginald Marsh's harbor scenes to Copenhagen. Her goal, she said, was to show all the world what America stands for, and in her words, to make sure that it was more than our Cokes and Frigidaires. 1963. Folks, AIE was born when artists were giving new meaning to beliefs about freedom of expression and individual liberty, beliefs that people held in their hearts then, even in the long shadow of the Berlin Wall, and which we were all too graphically reminded of uh, in terms of its cost in Paris a few days ago. There are many ways to trumpet the virtues of an open society but none as subtle, as compelling, or as elegant as well-chosen art. So today, we honor our artists. We honor them because of the mirror they hold up to who we are and what we hope to be, and because they have the ability to astonish and to surprise, to inspire and to make us think in new and hopefully liberating ways. Art enriches life. And when you consider the concrete barriers and other architectural handicaps which many of our embassies are saddled with, that enrichment is the counter to all of that. It lifts not only morale of our visitors, but believe me, also of our employees. And for that, we are extremely grateful. All this goes to underscore what everybody in this room really knows very well. Art can be a transformational force across the globe. It is. And if we need any further evidence, we have only to contemplate the careers of the artists who we recognize this afternoon. And now it's my privilege to be able to offer a word of appreciation for each of our awardees, uh, while Ellen and uh, Virginia Shore, our chief curator, will give out the medals as I say a word about each of them. And I want every one of you at the end of that to receive them appropriately. Many of us know uh, Sam Gilliam as the legendary Washington Color School painter. But around here, he is a patron and passionate believer in AIE. 
Today, Sam has paintings in over 20 countries, including Morocco, Cyprus, and South Korea. And for his longtime support of our mission, Sam is the first to receive the Medal of Arts Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations, my friend. Zhu Bing once said that art should serve the people, which is exactly what the two spectacular editions of his Monkeys Grasping the Moon sculpture do each day in Washington's Sackler Gallery and our embassy in Beijing. For his efforts to link Chinese, American, and many other cultures through art, we thank and congratulate Zhu Bing. And Zhu, Zhu Bing flew all the way from Beijing yesterday, literally arrived here in time to do this, and we're very grateful. Thank you. You honor us by being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. When Mark uh, Bradford looks at a city, he sees more than the rest of us do with our untrained eyes. He invariably looks everywhere, and he sees art everywhere. Mark's collages and installations, some scavenged, all beautiful, have hung in our embassies in Stockholm and Berlin. And each tells a different story about the American experience of class, gender, and race in an urban environment. Mark, we join in saying congratulations and thank you for the extraordinary work. Julie Moretto's uh, acrylic paintings are made with the accumulation of thousands of strokes and numerous layers of paint. The effect is a complex, dynamic body of work which we are proud to display at our embassies in Madrid and Julie's own birthplace of Addis Ababa. Julie, thank you for your creativity and for what you've lent to us. We appreciate it. Pedro Reyes's uh, sculpture depicting the inner ear displayed at our consulate uh, is displayed at our consulate in Tijuana. And it is a poignant reminder that people everywhere need to listen to one another. Pedro once said that art is supposed to make people talk, not about the work itself, but about the discussions that are yet to come. Pedro, for convincing us uh, to listen harder and to hear more when we do, we say congratulations and thank you. <laughs> Kehinde Wiley has redefined the art of portraiture by using highly naturalistic uh, technique not only to depict but to celebrate and lift up the world's people in all of their magnificent uh, variety. For his work in the Dominican Republic, Britain, and Jamaica, I congratulate uh, Kehinde, thank him for his commitment, and you gotta get me one of those coats, too. <laughs> Maya Lin's work uh, explores the environment in a way that only a brilliant artist can. In our Beijing embassy, we're pleased to display her Pin River installation, which is a rendering of the entire topography of the Yangtze River using 30,000 metal pins. 
And as a veteran of the conflict in Vietnam, let me also acknowledge the quiet eloquence of her renowned design for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. I know I'm not alone when you reach out and touch that wall or visit it. It's a remarkable place. And we are so grateful to you for your contributions to our country, to our relations with other countries, and for the art that you produce. Thank you, Mom. So let me ask everybody if you would all join together. I want you to rise and pay tribute to everybody and say congratulations to our artists and patriots in the truest sense. Thank you for your commitment to the ideals of our nation and for letting us use your work to forge greater understanding around the world. We are so grateful. <laughs>